via uh, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can also watch our embedded Ustream feed or click through to Ustream and watch it there. If you need to call to listen, say you have a flip phone or a home phone, you can call to listen at 832-999-1050. That's 832-999-1050. If you are heading into LA or OC and you want to uh, listen to us all the way there, use the TuneIn app on your iPhone, plug it into your car. It's a free app. You can find it in the App Store. You got to search for KCAA Radio. You can listen to all of our live shows 24-7 and all of our local shows you can also listen to on podcast. You can do the same thing on an Android device at kcaaexpress.com. So we've got a great show planned for you today. We're going to be talking in the second half of the show to DeAndre Salter. He is the author of Seven Wealth Building Secrets. So, you know, you want to you wanna hear about... Uh, how to how to ma- earn some money and how to build your wealth. Uh, you don't want to miss the second half of the show. And of course, in the first half, we're going to be talking about uh, great stories of the day. But before that, what are you grateful for, Tobin, on Greta Tuesday? I am grateful that it is almost summer vacation. I'm a middle school teacher. And you love your job. And I love my job. But at this time of the year... The kids are off the chain. The kids go a little crazy. And that, that, that year-long sense of exhaustion just kind of comes rolling in. And we're, we're, we're finishing up with state testing, and all of the end-of-the-year activities are just, just right around the corner. And it's just, man, I'm, 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 I love my job, but I'm just anxious for, for summer. And so I'm just grateful that it's coming because, man, I need a couple days off. <laughs> Do, you know, um, yeah, and you'll get more than a couple days being a teacher. But don't you remember being 12, 13 years old, and, like, summer was coming, and you just couldn't wait? Oh, the kids are hyped. I mean, they are so excited about it, you know. They're, they're counting it down. Mr. Breaker, Mr. Breaker, only 15 more days. Mr. <laughs> Breaker, Mr. Breaker, oh my God, do you know how summer's going to be here? I'm going to go and I'm going to do and I'm going to... And they're, they're just bouncing yeah, off the Yeah, because, you know, it's your kids, of course yeah. they are. And then, then your coworkers are probably doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's in the staff lounge. <laughs> okay, Mark, what are you grateful for? Well, you know, I'm grateful for a lot of things, but I've had some good fortune lately with my little radio project that I'm building up in Yucaipa, so I'm pretty happy about that. I can't really talk about it on the air, but uh, things are shaping up, and I'm grateful for that. Well, that's good. That's yeah. good. And, you know, I am I am grateful for, I think, family more than anything, and God. Yeah. God, definitely God, uh, but family yeah. more than anything. So, you know, my our son is graduating this uh this Yay. June from Cal State San Bernardino. And I don't know if we shared this on the air or not, but did I don't know if we shared this on the air. Have. He was he was chosen as the outstanding undergraduate student uh, for 2015 for the school, I'm sorry, the College of Natural Sciences. So um, he's going to be speaking at graduation and it's an incredible honor. There's what, 1,100 students in, in the College of uh, yeah. Natural Sciences and he was chosen it's, as it's, it's the top. To, it's similar to being like the valedictorian it is. high school class. Class and, wow, that's um, cool. And of course, he's smart. He's you know yeah. your child, and yeah. uh, you know that's great. He uh, is a scientist, huh? Um, he's sort? a computer science major with okay. a mathematics minor. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he's had an amazing undergrad uh, career so far. He uh, wrote a textbook for a class. He helped to uh, he teach a class. Um, yes, he's had published research. Yeah, he's uh, attended several different summer programs where he's got to do uh, research and. Uh, had his research published, and he's just, you know, doing phenomenal things, and uh, the, the job offers have been rolling in, and, you know, he hasn't even really gone looking for them. They've come looking for him, and I don't know how many college people can can say that, and I think it's partly because he chose a really good career. Computer, uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that he's science. a computer science major helps. You know, that's just yeah. one of those industries that's just, uh, they're constantly looking for, for good talent. Um, and then I think also it's the fact that Cal State actually has a really good program, and those professors out there have done a great job of preparing him and then also just making contacts with the understanding that these kids are going to go to careers. Absolutely. For years, for Cal State, you know, for years, as far as I can remember, back when they had, you know, green cathodroid screens, Cal State was the place to go to learn computer science. And that's yeah, a great they, place uh, for that. it's actually, uh, the Cal State is a gem. They don't do a great job of, of bragging about their accomplishments, but, you know, they've got a, a, a Model United Nations team, for example, that's won a top award or second to the top award for over 20 years at, yeah. the, at the national mm-hmm. uh, United MUN conference in New York. Um, they've got uh, their cybersecurity program is is nationally ranked. The business school is nationally ranked. I mean, all of these school things. of education. Yes, yeah. I mean it's it's uh, it's a good school. It we is. have a gem here in the Inland Empire. Amazing so. that we do, and uh, 
a lot of people just don't appreciate it as much as they should. That's well, you know, it's close. So people go, oh, it's too close to home or whatever. And they want to go somewhere far away and they don't realize the gem that's here. Yeah, exactly. So I wonder if the kids who live in Boston feel that way about Harvard. Oh, it's just Harvard. I doubt it. It's just Harvard. <laughs> Probably you know, not. It's just but you know, there's the 50 universities in Boston. Yeah. 50 colleges and universities in Boston, including MIT. Oh, you know, MIT, it's close to home, you know, whatever. I doubt they feel that way. Well, think about the area we live in with the University of Redlands and University of Riverside and Cal State San Bernardino and the Claremont Colleges. Yeah. Wow. We're lucky. We're fortunate. We, we are, are fortunate. And we, it's already time for a break. It's 6.15. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. We are on the brink here on KCAA AM 1050. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Here's some music. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't quite ready for that one, but okay. We got it. <laughs> it's the morning. Here it is. You can buy rolls of forever stamps from your local post office, protecting you from future price increases. But we the people now need to put a forever stamp on the post office itself. A cabal of corporate predators, congressional anti-government ideologues, and pusillanimous postal officials are dismantling this invaluable public service piece by piece, an agency that literally has delivered for America from the very start of our country. Yet, in the name of saving the U.S. Postal Service, they've been gutting its services, intentionally driving away business. Having fewer customers will give the cabal an excuse to make more cuts and ultimately to kill it as a public entity. This is like a boss telling workers the beatings will continue until morale improves. Post office workers, letter carriers, and mail handlers are tired of the beatings so they've launched a nationwide campaign with dozens of other grassroots organizations to rally public support to save our public postal service by revitalizing and expanding the services that this venerable American institution can and should provide. Under the uplifting banner of I Stand with Postal Workers, the American Postal Workers Union is coordinating a National Day of Action this Thursday, May 14th. Some 70 public demonstrations and rallies will take place Thursday at post offices in 30 states, from Alaska to Florida, Maine to California. To join this spirited stand for restoring the common good in America, you can find the exact location, time, and contact number for each local event at www.apwu.org. This is Jim Hightower saying, join me this Thursday in standing with postal workers for the benefit of all the people. Each of us can be a symbolic forever stamp to protect our public post offices from the privatizers. To join us, go to apwu.org. Hi, everybody. Ray Lucia here. You know, we just saw the biggest jump in mortgage rates in more than 25 years. So now it's more important than ever to lock in your loan with a professional who has a thorough understanding of this wild mortgage market. That pro, Steve Allidord, the loan financial planner, from Rancho Financial. Steve is one of the top 1% of mortgage originators in the entire country. And for years, Steve has worked with me, my family members, and friends, and in most cases, will close your loan in 30 days or less. Time is critical if you're ready to buy or refi. No one knows where rates will go next. Learn the advantages of working with a direct lender who can fast-track your loan. Steve Allador can calculate which program is best for you and educate you about all of your options. Call the loan financial planner, Steve Allador, at 888 That's 888 Or watch Steve's free home loan webinar at LoanFinancialPlanner.com. That's LoanFinancialPlanner.com. Are you particular about the vitamins and supplements you take? Have you found that the big chain stores simply don't have what you need? Then you should know about the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. You'll find rock bottom prices on gourmet top quality vitamins and mineral supplements at the Vitamin Center. Get 30% off on all supplements and homeopathic products. All, not just selected merchandise. In addition, you'll find 30% off on all cosmetics, soaps, shampoos, toothpaste, makeup, hair coloring, and lip gloss. And all tea products are discounted 20%. Why go anywhere else? See for yourself at the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. 5007 Canaan Road in Agora Hills, or check out the savings and place your order online, vitamincenteragorahills.com. Start saving by getting what you need from the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills, and tell a friend that the Vitamin Center ships nationwide. Call 818-707-0005. That's 818-707-0005. The Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. 
Here's a look at the community calendar. I'm Di Rice. Inland Pacific Ballet will be performing at four different theaters across the Southland. There will be ten opportunities to see Beauty and the Beast, so make sure you catch one of these breathtaking performances. Shows will begin April 25th and run through May 16th. Performances will be held in Claremont, Rancho Cucamonga, and Riverside. Find your show and pick your seats for Beauty and the Beast at ipballet.org. Group discounts are available, and that is a look at the KCAA community calendar. I'm Di Rice. Don't miss a minute of the action. Check out the podcasts at www.kcaaradio.com. The station that leaves no listener behind. AM 1050 KCAA. All right. Is that a drunken trumpet? I mean, that's what it sounds like. It, it, right? sound, it sounds <laughs> like like 1950s dinner theater kind of music. I wish I could play a trumpet like that. That's awesome. This is Lou Preda and uh, Cherry Blossom Time. It's actually the theme music for Al Palazzo's show. Uh, Al Palazzo is a local activist who you might be familiar with, Tobin. I know has, Al. Yeah, he has his own show here at 4 p.m. on Tuesdays. Okay. And that's his theme music. <laughs> I like it. It's well, pretty. Why are you playing theme music for another show? So we could plug that show. That's right. That's right. That's good. Well, <laughs> and I, I actually don't know Al Palazzo, but if he's an activist, I'm sure he has an interesting radio show. It is. It's very interesting. It talks about a plan or a vision that he has for San Bernardino. He does these tours of San Bernardino, and he says, look, I think we should do this here. And Look, I think he's an idea man. Uh, that's uh, basically basically what I can say. And very interesting. He loves San Bernardino, and he's very supportive of San Bernardino. And I think he does it in a very positive and constructive way. Oh, well, that's awesome. Well, we're going to talk about something that's not terribly positive or constructive. A woman is alleging that her she was fired because she deleted an app that let her boss track her movements 24-7. So a California woman is suing her former employer after she claimed she was fired for uninstalling a smartphone app that let her boss track her movements 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. According to Ars Technica, which obtained a copy of the complaint, Myrna Arias Arias, worked for the Intermex wire transfer service when she says her boss, John Stubbitz, fired her for deleting the Zora, now Click Software, job management app from her smartphone. In the suit, Arias claimed that the app allowed Intermex and, and Stubbitz to track her movement whether she was working or not. She said that she and her fellow employees asked Stubbitz if he could track them when they weren't working, and he admitted the employees would be monitored while off duty and bragged that he knew how fast she was driving at specific moments ever since he had installed the app on her phone. Creepy. Acco- I know. According to the suit, Arias didn't have a problem with the app tracking her while she was working, but didn't want it doing so when she was off. Doing so, Arias said, amounted to an invasion of privacy. You think? Yeah. Uh, Zora, the app that Arias complained about, tracks and manages mobile employees while they're in the field. She's seeking payment for lost wages and punitive damages. Um, this is uh, unbelievable. The thing about this type of story is that we're, we're living in this brave new world of technology, and the laws haven't caught up with what's happening to us, right? And so here she has a company that's saying, okay, you work in the field, so we need to be able to track where you are in the field. So they're requiring her to put this app on her phone, but they, they've completely shattered what we would think of as a normal workplace lifestyle boundary. Yes. Right? With, with this idea that they can track her at any point of the day, anytime, anywhere. Uh, and that's just ridiculous. And, and we need laws to protect us from this kind of stuff. Because yes. otherwise companies will just say, well, this is, this is just uh, the cost of uh, having a job with us. You want to work? You want to get paid? You're going to have to do this. And it's these kind of laws that need to be done that aren't being done in Washington and, you know, in the state because they're too busy, you know, you know, capitulating to the people who fund their campaigns. Well, and, and that's the thing is that these, there's corporate interests that will lobby them to say, oh, no, no, we need this. We need this. This is, you know, it, you know there's no way we can fix this. Of course, we all know there's got to be a way that, you know, these apps can do backflips and somersaults and all kinds of crazy stuff. Don't tell me you can't put a button on there that turns it off. And, you know, it's precisely this kind of legislation is protective. It really doesn't generate any money or revenue. Uh, it doesn't get done right now. And that's yep. the, the, the really thing that's so frustrating because, you know, we, we've been living in a high-tech world now for, you know, we think it's a recent development, but it really isn't. It's, you know, we're, you know, 
talking 10, 15 years now, this stuff started to, you know, present itself. So, yeah, it, the the thing about it is they, employees, so like you say you drive a work truck, um, you know, you, you're a, you're, I don't know, you were a repairman, you work on cars in the, in the field or work on whatever it is that you work on. Um, there have been GPS units in these kinds of trucks for a long time, tracking what happens with where that work truck goes. Well, but you But you drop the work truck off at the motor pool at the end of the day. Um, or you park it in your driveway while you go, you take your family car out to putter around, you know, to do whatever it is that you do. Yeah. But because it's on her person, it's on a phone, it's different. I mean, I guess the only thing that she could do then is to, to shut it off um, at the end of the day um, and and put it in a place that's stationary and tell, uh, like in her home, until she goes back to work. But it sounds like it's not her, her, it sounds like it's her personal phone that they made her put this app on, you know? Oh, that's a big no way. Yeah. Uh Uh-uh. Might as well put an ankle bracelet on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, There's, I mean, would you, if you, if you had an employer who said, we're going to put this app on your personal phone, what would you say? Nope, get me a, get me a work phone. Right, I'm I'm happy to do it on a phone that you pay for, but no, this is my phone. What's next? We got to strap cameras to our chest and you seriously. Know. Yeah. Hey, for my job, that may not be far off. I mean, I'm serious. Oh, you know, this idea yeah. of teachers, you know, we, it's starting with cops. They want to have cops running these body cameras, but there have been discussions of having cameras in the classroom for years so parents can see what's going on. And and I used to be really opposed to it, but I'll tell you, as time has gone by, I realize that there's a real benefit to having a record of some of this stuff. And it, I know it protects not, you. Yeah, and, but I know it's not always 100% accurate. And this is the, the, the tough part, that sometimes things will look a certain way on a camera, but it doesn't fully capture what actually happened. And so mm-hmm. you have to be careful in, in, you know, about how we look at some of this stuff. Um, but, but I actually had a, a, a potentially career-altering thing happen that, that my butt was saved by the cameras. Um, and, and this was a few years ago where a kid was running down the hallway and ran into me. And... Um, the impact spun us both around, and, and he basically slammed into the wall. And later, a rumor got started that I hit this kid or that I banged him up against the wall and, and all this kind of stuff. Mm. And it made its way to the media. And I was a city councilman, and the newspaper, you know, oh, I bet. Yeah. Front, front page above the fold, you know, accused me of hitting a kid. And the district, you know, uh, had to do an investigation. And guess what the investigation did? Completely cleared me because of the video camera, mm-hmm. which completely backed up my written statement about what had happened that day. Um, and, uh, in fact, I got a commendation from the district because I was the only teacher that was back in my classroom on time after lunch. Mm-hmm. And there was a ton of kids running around in the hallway. And I was the only one on duty trying to sort of monitor that. Um, you know, but the, the camera saved my butt. Yeah, that's one case where it does, you know. This is just a joke, but, you know, if you're going to get accused of something, you might as well have the fun of doing it, I'd say. <laughs> Sometimes you feel that way, yes. but you can't do it. I you know, understand and, that, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the student, you know, you think it's, it, with little kids, people think, oh, it's just a kid. With little kids, maybe that's true. If a five-year-old had run into you, perhaps he wouldn't have had the right. inertia to spin you around. But but middle school kids are often as, as tall as we are. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and some of them, there was one kid, we went to an event recently, and sweet kid that was there um it was for the uh incredible edible community garden out at nicholson park and this kid was out there feeding a llama he must have been what six five yeah and and, that's one of my students and he's a seventh grader or eighth grader yeah six uh, he's huge so like that. an eighth grader is what uh 13 years old? 13 yeah. 12 13 yeah 12, yeah so they're 13 years old in this man's body exactly well yeah. and you got up close to him and you you know he was very obviously 13 but standing yeah. back he looked like an adult because yeah. he was so big well and and when this incident happened to me um you know this kid wasn't one of my students it was just a random kid running down the hall i had no i'd never seen this kid before never had an interaction with him negative or positive and it just based on a rumor that made its way to the local media. Oh, you yeah. Know? That's the kind of stuff that sells newspapers, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I mean, it was just shocking to me. And, I, and I'd always been opposed to those cameras. But at that moment, when the camera cleared me, I had that, that you know, come to Jesus moment. Like, oh, God, thank you for the camera. Yes. You know? Cameras at work and stuff like that. Because we have a camera right now. I've got yeah. a camera on me. And there's a camera on you. Yes. Um, we're used to that. That's okay. That's all right. But not at home. No. Yeah. And the GPS, you can track if I go to Vegas, if I go to whatever, you know. And, and especially <laughs> since some people are doing things they shouldn't be doing, you know, stepping out on a husband or wife. And if your boss knows that, yeah. there's a potential for blackmail. There's all kinds of ugly stuff that could happen. Yeah. And Mark says no cameras at home. But I'll be honest with you. When we got burglarized uh, a little, little over a year ago, one of the things that we've talked about since then is putting in the camera system because what the police have said is that the alarm systems are great, 
but the, because of the, the high demand of, on our police department, they don't usually get there quick enough. And so what you really want is you want one of those camera systems so that when the police do arrive, you have some evidence you can show them, say, here's a picture of the guy who broke into my house. That's true. I know somebody put a little camera in to watch their dog because their dog was unattended and yep. wanted to make sure their dog was okay. But, you know, you really don't want to see me at, you know, 7 in the morning on a Sunday morning. No, well, no, and no, that's no. why you have to be careful about where you place the cameras and, and what time they're on and, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that they're only activated when you're not there. <laughs> exactly. Maybe they're a- attached to your alarm. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I just, uh, it'll be interesting to watch this case. Um, you know, I think that this is, you know, this this may change the rules for how employees employers deal with employees. You know, this this woman who had this smartphone with the app on it. And so, uh, you know, we'll, it, I, think it's imp- I think it will be a, a, a groundbreaking case. I think so, too. And I think that one of the bigger areas we've got to start talking about is, w- you know, how do our civil rights translate to the workplace? Because it seems to me that oftentimes businesses feel like they don't have to follow what we believe to be our basic rights. You no. Know? No, that we're property of them. Yeah, that government government says, okay, we have to be respectful of your rights for the most part. But your your workplace says, nope, sorry, you know, you're, you're, you work for us and we make the rules. And, and if we give you the right to, to do this, then you can do it. But if we don't, tough. Yeah, it shouldn't work that way. I know. Shouldn't work that way. Not in America. Not in America. So it is time for another break. It's uh, 6.30 a.m. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we have Mark Westwood in the booth. We are on the Brink, the morning show here on KCAA AM 1050. And we'll be right back. Psst. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you know where you are? Well, you've done it now. You're listening to KCAA Loma Linda your CNBC news station. So expect the unexpected. Electricity prices have been going higher and higher, and experts predict that average prices will continue increasing. You could save thousands of dollars a year while increasing the value of your home by switching to solar energy with Best Energy Advisor, the leader in affordable solar energy since 1987. Everyone's heard about the benefits of solar energy. It works day or night, and it doesn't matter if it's sunny or cloudy out. A solar system from Best Energy Advisor is now more affordable than ever. One free call to our experts and you'll find out how to get a solar system installed for zero money down and zero payments for a year. Remember this number, 800-413-9452. We make it easy to go solar and handle all the paperwork to take advantage of the government's tax credits, grants, and rebates so that you can save even more money. But these won't last forever, so call now. 800-413-9452. Don't sign a solar lease until you speak with us. Call 800-413-9452. Go solar and learn how to save money on your energy bill every month. Call 800-413-9452. We are producers. We are crafters of quality hay and forage. There's an art to harvesting the best hay and forage, and it starts with the right equipment. From dependable disc mowers and mower conditioners to efficient rakes and tedders, round balers and bale wrappers, Kubota has engineered a full line of field-proven hay tools you can trust to perform season after season. Visit your local Kubota dealer today during the More Power to You sales event for low-rate, long-term financing. For all your hay tool needs, we are Kubota. What have I learned so far? Well, I've learned there's no one right path for everyone. I've learned that without my high school diploma, I can only do so much. My options were limited, very limited. I found a free personalized learning program with Learn for Life that has a flexible schedule so I can keep my job while earning my high school diploma. I found a new career with training opportunities that would jumpstart my future. What I've learned so far, I've learned that I could change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or Enroll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. KCAA, where every day is a great day. KCAA, Loma Linda. Welcome back. I'm Aaron Brinker. 
And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show here on KCAA AM 1050. And our next guest, I'm so excited to introduce, DeAndre Salter. He is a dynamic visionary who possesses an insightful awareness of what people need to be empowered for spiritual and natural success. Uh, a senior pastor of the Tabernacle Church in South Plainfield, New Jersey, and the CEO of Professional Risk Solutions and other business ventures, he has helped countless aspiring entrepreneurs build wealth to unlock new opportunities and influence and influence society. He has written a book, Seven Wealth Building Secrets, Your Guide to Money and Meaning. Welcome to the show, DeAndre. Wow, Aaron Tobin, I'm flattered by the introduction. <laughs> so excited to have you on. So, you know, tell us about your book. You know, I, I wrote Seven Wealth Building Secrets really to get the message out um, that I don't think we have a income equality issue in America. I really think we have a knowledge uh, inequality Amen. issue in America. You know, I think if more people knew um, how to build wealth from the ground up, I think we'd engage a larger audience. And so I'm trying to bridge the gap between the divide and tell people the truth. You know, entrepreneurship and small business is beautiful. It is the number one way people are employed and the number one pathway to wealth in America and always has been, always will be. So tell us about your seven strategies. What are they? You know, um, I, I, I just think when we look at today's business environment, it's really complex, it's really competitive, and it really takes us stepping back from traditional views and going against the grain. And so I, I've come up with these, uh, these, these strategies that I think can help everybody. For, for instance, the first one that I really love to talk about is the idea that quitting can be a good thing. You know, I run into people all the time, Aaron, that have passion, and because of their passion, they'll hang on to a sinking ship. They'll hang on to an idea that just doesn't work. They'll hang on to a business division that just doesn't work. And sometimes quitting can be a good thing. If the ship's going down, there's really no honor in drowning with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> let's get off. Even if we're shipwrecked, let's get off the next island. And guess what? Here's the good news. There'll probably be another boat that we can get on, so no need to go down with this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just, it's, it's hit a little close to home in some cases. <laughs> <laughs> not the station, don't get the wrong idea, I just know people. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how do you know when it's time to quit? I mean, sometimes people, you know, they, they, um, they, they really love the people they work with, they're, they're committed to what it, whatever it is they're doing, you know, whether they're working in the for-profit sector or the non-profit sector. Um, so how do, you, how do you know when it's time to go and make that leap? That's a great question. I think there's really two things. Number one, the results will speak for themselves. I mean, have you ever, I mean, I've walked through a casino or two, and I've seen people uh, just uh, stay at the table far too long. I mean, if you deal too many bad hands and you, you're in the bad end of that, uh, at some point money's going to get short and short and short. And if you stay at the table hoping for that one big turnaround hand, you're probably going to walk out bankrupt. So I think yeah. the results speak for themselves. You have to look at the bottom line and realize that if I've spent enough money uh, on a project, maybe I've spent the marketing dollars I need, I've invested in the research that I need, but the product just doesn't work or the idea is just not catching it's probably a good sign to let it go. I think the second thing that we can do is trust the advisors around us. Um, you know, it's a tough world out there. We're never going to make it by ourselves. And sometimes we don't listen very well to the people who know us best, you know, that coworker that knows us best or that family member that knows us best, or as you said, in a nonprofit, those other organizational leaders, they have some viewpoints too. And sometimes they know the ship's going down and, and we can watch them jump off the boat before we get off. So, so let's talk about creating that safety net, or maybe it's, you know, some people when they think I'm going to be an entrepreneur and they go out and they look for a franchise or they look for, you know, something that's already up and, you know, it's running, but they don't necessarily pick the right choice for them. They don't, you know, how do you pick the right, how do you pick the right thing for you? You know, it, 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 it really boils down to uh, deciding how you're going to look at life, right? So, there are two ways to look at uh, how to start a business or what business is right for me. One way is, we always hear this, the popular advice is, well, find out what your passion is and pursue your passions because if you pursue your passion, you'll have the energy to run after it and it'll help you hang in there through the tough times. Well, again, I kind of come at it differently. I don't think that will always work for everyone. I think sometimes 
we can get to our passions through another means. Perhaps sometimes we need to do what we need to do rather than do what we want to do. And if we do what we need to do, we can uh, accumulate the resources, the connections, and the network to do the passionate thing later or to do what we want to do later. So I think the first thing we need to do before we find out what kind of business we want to start or what kind of uh, uh, small opportunity we want to get into is I think we need to talk to other people. I think we need to discover ourselves to other people. Um, I think we need to not only look at our passions but look at our skills because sometimes, Aaron, our passions are not worth as much as our skills early on. For instance, I'll give you a perfect example. I knew uh, I coached a young lady one time. She had a passion for writing. She loved to write. She wanted to be a writer, but she had a skill of making pies. And so she sat down with me. She said, like, what should I do? I really want to write. I said, well, you know, writing's pretty tough. You know, I know I'm doing it. It's pretty tough. <laughs> um, <laughs> but pies are really, really good. You know, uh, you may not be passionate about those pies, but I am, and I'm a potential customer. So maybe there are more people that will be more passionate about your pies than you will have passion for your pies, and you can profit from that. And how about you use your pies to open up the doors for you and sell those pies. Go to restaurants and go to diners and sell those pies. You know, we have diners in the East Coast. You know, sell those pies. And then one day, you can use those resources and perhaps start your own small press. And she did it. And today, she's doing very well for herself. Actually, she's learned to love pies now. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, uh, you know, who is who is really passionate about making sandwiches or washing windows or, you know, doing some of the other things that that people either buy franchises for or just start on their own. But, you know, you could create a positive environment in, in doing any work, you know, so it's really about what kind of business person do you want to be? Well, I'll give you another example. Uh, there's a guy I know named Mark uh, on the West Coast. And so he was just a, a just a great church guy. He's one of these guys that was at his church all the time in his free time serving his church. And so um, his church invited a lot of speakers in from the marketplace, business leaders to come in and do these seminars. Mark volunteered himself to go pick up the speakers from the airport and drop them off at the hotel and then transport them to the church. Well, he was so good at it that I said to him, I said, you know, Mark, you know, you're great with VIPs. You ever thought about a VIP limo service? And he goes, no, I, you know, why would I do that? I said, because you're doing it already. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a really good point. It is. And, and guess what? He was just doing something, you know, uh, altruistic, but it turned into a very profitable venture. And even to this day, he now owns, you know, 25, 30 limos. He has a couple locations. He's doing very well for himself. And that started out in just a nonprofit volunteer uh, sector. So let me, you know you bring up philanthropy or nonprofits. You know what what role does giving play in building wealth? You know, actually, two things. Um, I, I say two things about that, and I'm very serious about it, and they're near and dear to my heart. I think giving is the new receiving. And if you talk to millennials today, I have a couple in my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do too. <laughs> oh, okay, All right. so, so you know they, you know, the beauty of them is they actually think differently. And I don't know if you read the the press yesterday that. Uh, they have now surpassed every other generation as the most working generation. So, and, and that's because they're out there and they're hustling and they're making it happen as best they can. They've grown up in, a, in the Great Recession, right? right. And, uh, so, so they get it. They understand that you have to work hard. And I think one of the concepts that they've gravitated towards that I agree with is giving is the new receiving. It's about the wider world around us. And I don't talk about giving in the sense of money. I think one of the most valuable things we can give is our time and our talent. And I think, I think it's good business to do it. Because when we develop others and we develop other organizations who don't have the resources and or the intellectual capital they need to get to the next level, we, we build a wider community. And it also builds such a brand in the community that becomes so powerful uh, that we begin to extend our tentacles out. So when I think of philanthropy, I don't just jump to money. I jump to time and to talent. Because most people can make their money if they can meet people to show them how. The problem is most of us don't have the connections to the people that have it. So let's give back our time and let's give back our, our, our talent. The second thing I say is, you know, sharing makes you richer. And so I really love the billionaire's pledge. I'm a big fan of that. I love the fact that, you know, some of the richest people in the world are leaving us a message to say, hey, it's not all about money. Um, that's why I wrote my book, Seven Wealth Building Secrets, Your Guide to Money and Meaning. Money without purpose is just empty, but money with purpose is powerful 
it can change generations. And so uh, while we have Occupy Wall Street, we also have the Billionaire's Pledge, and that's the beauty of America. And so I think sharing our wealth makes us richer because when we're philanthropic and we're giving back into great causes, we, we're paying it forward, you know, and, and there's, there's no better way to build our society than to do that. So, DeAndre, you know, this has been a delightful conversation, and but I'm, it's been all the all this positive stuff, and I know it's not all positive. I know there's a lot of businesses out there that fail. So, what what, what would you like to say about that? I mean, how do you deal with you know with those failures? Yeah, I tell you, uh, that's a great question, Tom. And I think half a million businesses, from what I know, half a million businesses close their door every year. So there are a lot of people with dreams, and the door gets shut. But I would say to those people, number one. Um, just because you find your purpose don't mean you won't have problems. I mean, purpose and problems kind of go hand in hand. Indeed. And, right? So you can't, you can't give up. And, you know, you guys have a show. You've had to work hard to build your show. And I'm sure there were obstacles. And I've written this book, and they're going to be obstacles. So that comes with the territory. So what I first say to those people is don't lose hope because, if you're, because your first idea didn't work. You know, Colonel Sanders the guy from KFC, mm-hmm. from what I understand, he went through seven or eight business ventures that were all complete, utter failures before he stumbled upon that chicken recipe. And the rest is history. So He made he, a couple bucks selling chicken. Yeah, he made a lot of money selling chicken, <laughs> but apparently he was really bad at everything else. <laughs> so, so just because you, you, you failed, don't quit. And then the last two pieces of advice I would give to people who are, in, who are facing troubles is, number one, don't think that cash is your problem. You know, a lot of people say, my business failed because I didn't have cash. No, what we don't have is clarity. Clarity trumps cash every day of the week. Anyone with a clear vision can attract capital. A, or a nonprofit with a clear vision and a clear use of funds can attract donations. So our issue is not a cash issue. I think sometimes we're just not really clear as to why we need the money. And then the final thing I would say to those entrepreneurs who may be facing hard times is, uh, don't be a superhero and be your own worst enemy, right? Uh, don't don't learn to let go of things. You know, don't hold on to anything. This is a rapid changing environment. Indeed, it's okay to get help. Wow. Well, this has been fantastic, and I'm actually looking at your website now. If people buy your book on your website, they get a, a bonus, right? Yes. If you go to DeAndreSalter dot com, that's D E A N D R E S A L T E R dot com. Uh, we have a bonus download for you, a bonus ebook just for registering with your email address. But also it's going to put you in a loop for um, the new academy we're going to be starting online, really just to help small business owners with some real strong, practical, behind-the-scenes, everything from how to build business credit to um, how to network and how to make the big ask. Well, this is fantastic. DeAndre, we've, it's been a thrill having you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you. So we've been talking to DeAndre Salter, the author of The Seven Wealth Building Secrets, Your Guide to Money and Meaning. I, he get, left us with really good information. He did, and we put his link on all our social media sites. So if you want to get his book, if you're interested in learning more, please check it out. This was great, great information. I think this would be very be- beneficial to a lot of people. I agree. I agree. Well, it's time for another break at 647 a.m. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the brink here on KCAA AM 1050. We'll be right back. KCAA Loma Linda, your CNBC news station, where your business comes first. KCAA invites you to listen to professional money manager Bill Gunderson every weekday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. Bill Gunderson is a highly respected money manager. He's a regular contributor to MarketWatch, TheStreet.com, and Town Hall Finance. Gunderson has appeared many times on the Fox News Channel, the Fox Business Network, and CNBC. You can hear Bill Gunderson's daily insight into the market at 7 a.m. weekdays, right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. There are three reasons why West Coast Auto of Montclair has been consistently named top-rated pre-owned dealer in California. Quality, trust, savings. Every vehicle is hand-selected, extensively serviced, and reconditioned by our certified technicians so you can feel certain that you're getting the best in-class vehicles with financing options that work for you. Like 0% down and no payments for 90 days. Experience the best for yourself with West Coast Auto of Montclair. Online at westcoastauto.com or by calling 909-9 million. 
It's time for some delicious food at Pizza Dilly. Pizza Dilly Pizza in Colton, home of the famous two foot pizza with 32 slices of simply the best delicious Pizza Dilly mouth watering pizza. Pizza Dilly has all kinds of lunch specials Monday through Friday, starting at $3.99, all delicious. Stop by, refresh, refuel, have a cold drink, enjoy a tasty salad or a great specialty delicious sub sandwich, or simply delightful Pizza Dilly wings. Pizza Dilly is also a people dilly because your friends are all already there enjoying one of Pizza Dilly's giant screens, watching one of their favorite teams, and if you love the Dodgers, you'll love Pizza Dilly, your hometown Dodger station all year round. Come on in, enjoy a great pizza, enjoy Pizza Dilly, the real Dilly deal at 194 East Valley Boulevard in Colton or call 909-370-0242. Once again, that's 909-370-0242. This is KCAA. Well, that was festive. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. We've got Mark Westwood in the booth. Mm-hmm. What, what, what are we listening to, Mark? This is Spyro Gyra. Uh, yeah, Spyro Gyra. Yeah. Cool. Morning Dance, it's called. Yeah, very. it's very uh, perky. Yeah. You know, Caribbean it's a, sounding. It's a great morning out. With the steel you know? drums. I have to say, I love the steel drums. When we were in the Caribbean a couple of years ago. I, I really loved that. I love the steel drums. And I, I say we were in the crib, and we were really in the West Indies. Yes, we were. You know, I do mobile DJ work, and I've done weddings since I was like 18. And, you know, I still do them once in a while. Not often, but I still do. But I have a steel drum version of uh, the wedding march. Do you really? It's really kind of cool, yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah, it does. So, Aaron, I wanted to tell you, because we are talking earlier in the show about the end of the school year, there was a story today that just uh, really got me going, because... Uh, the, the title is High School Students Not Laughing After Their Hilarious Senior Prank Has Them Facing Jail Time. Whoops. Uh-oh. And got me thinking about some of the senior pranks that went on when I was in school. But let me start with what these guys did because uh, they kind of went over the limit. They kind of crossed the line a little bit. Uh, the line was a few feet behind them. Um, 18-year-old Springfield student Taylor Monroe, Stuart Parrott, Justin Weekly, and 19-year-old Anthony Esposito were charged with felony vandalism along with disrupting public service when they attempted to bring some humor to their fellow classmates. Um, according to officials, the pranksters deflated the tires of 24 school buses by removing the valve stems, which ended up forcing the school district to cancel classes for the day. The punctured tires were accompanied with a couple of messages written in chalk, which read, You have been pranked by seniors 2015, and to have school or not to have school? Question mark. I'm sure they were just thinking that you could, you know, pump up those tires again, and it would be no big deal. Well, not if you remove the valve stems. Yeah, the valve stems. <laughs> oh, oh, they, they removed the whole, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, they removed the whole stems. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's that's a big deal. So, yeah, so the whole tire basically has to be replaced, uh, you know, I mean, and, and, and 24 buses, and we're talking a lot of tires. This is not, uh, not cheap. Um, authorities say the damage caused by the prank will likely cost the school thousands of dollars to fix. Uh, consequently, the students are looking at a possible six months jail sentence. Oh, uh, yeah, whoops. six months. Um, and you know, I know how these things go. I mean, you're sitting around with your friends. You want to do something that's epic, right? That's going to be talked about for years. Mm-hmm. Well, they you did know? that. And and but you want to do something that's funny and cool. And I'm sure they're thinking, hey, you know, they, they'll have to cancel school. Everyone will be laughing about this, won't this? And they never entered their mind that what they were doing was criminal. You know. I'm certain of it. I'm certain that nobody stopped them in, in, in that group and said, hmm, I wonder if we could get in real trouble for this. It never entered their mind. I'm sure they just thought this is just a funny thing. Yeah, well, they didn't steal the, you know, a goat from an opposing team or something. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is I, you know, and for some reason I didn't quite hear the taking, you know, cutting out the valve stem. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've destroyed That's the vandalism. tire. Yeah. Uh, I can share with you the class of 1981 senior prank of San Bernardino High School in just a second here. Um, it, it, it was very harmless because it didn't damage anybody uh, or damage any property. And it was just simply that the guys on a sporting team, and I had nothing to do with this, but I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, we had a beloved senior English teacher. Uh, her name was Mrs. Taylor, and she drove this little, little bitty tiny Fiat. And the, the, the parking lot was right next to the B building. And the guys figured out that if they took the centerpiece of the uh, big double doors of the B building off with a hex, kind of a head uh, screw, they could pick up that car and they moved <laughs> it into the B building, set it down, <laughs> and then put the thing back, put the diviner thing back. Ah! 
<laughs> and these people are like scratching their head. How the heck did they get this car in the <laughs> That's, that's a good funny. One. That was. That's, yeah. good that's one. very funny. And, and, and that's like a typical one, right? Like you yeah. hear about people's cars getting moved or. Or they or, s- put the Bob, Bob's big boy on the roof of the school. Or yeah, or they you know, TP something or, you know, yeah. something like that. Um, now, last year, was it last year when Reagan graduated? Yes. And her senior classic, Grand Terrace, oh they had gosh, a bunch of vandalism. Oh my gosh, it was bad. It was bad yeah. vandalism. Where, where I think it started off with a, a small group that was going to do something not so bad, and then a whole bunch of other folks got involved, but they ended up breaking school property, dumping a whole bunch of stuff in the pool, you know, and just things that just were, were very damaging, and, and kids got in trouble, police got involved, you know, and so there's a line. There's definitely a mm-hmm. line. Um, I think back to what we did when I was a senior, and nowadays you couldn't do it. And, and even back then, we're lucky we didn't get in some serious trouble, I guess. Um, but uh, uh, you don't need to tell the story. No, no, I'm going to tell the story. It needs to be told. Is the statute of limitations the over? The statute of limitations <laughs> is over. <laughs> but, um, That's why I told that other one. We, we were going to we were going to have our graduation at Colton High School out on the field, the football field. And so uh, the night before the graduation, uh, we went out to the field uh, with some gasoline canisters and we rode out class of 86 on the field and lit it up we lit it up we burned into the grass class of 86 okay that's pretty destructive no nah, grass grows back though yeah grass grows back but um could i remember it could have been dangerous though you it was dangerous back. i mean it, it was stupid because i remember when we lit it up you, you don't understand just how quickly and how big this thing was and it just lit up i mean the, the whole field lit up and all of a sudden you know we're out there in the middle of the night and it's dark out and all of a sudden it's brighter than daylight <laughs> you know with all this giant fire in the f- middle of the field and of course none of us had any kind of like ex- fire extinguisher thing to put it out what if, a bunch of boneheads oh if, my god if, <laughs> I thought you were going to follow this up when you had something to put it out with. No, 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 no. So we just had to wait and let it burn out. And, of course, we ran, right? Because once it lit up like that, we're, we're like, exposed now. You could have set us. the school on fire. I know, I know. What but, a bunch of knuckleheads. But it, it burned itself out, actually, fairly quickly. By the time we had <laughs> run to the other end of the field, you know, it had pretty much flash burned itself out. Um, and, but the sad part is, is after going through all this and all the, the stuff the next day when we got there, uh, the school had... Uh, sort of covered over it. I don't know if they'd put green paint or done something, but it was, you couldn't really tell that it had been burned. Oh. And so we went to all this and it was like, what? It's not there? That was actually the best response they <laughs> could have possibly done. That's the teacher administration pushback. They, they never yes. want to admit this stuff yeah. or whatever. You know, here I am giving ideas to students who might be going on the way to school going, hey, that's a great idea. Some some car is going to, remi- you know, wind up in the B building this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, the year before me got in some trouble. The two the two guys who did the prank uh, weren't able to walk with their graduating class because they got caught. Do you know what they did? Uh, they took the walkie, uh, uh, walkie-talkie from one of the security guards, and all day long they were broadcasting on that walkie-talkie obscene Ooh. stuff Ooh. and, like, poking fun at the administration and at various people on campus. And, um, you know, of course, they were doing it in voices and whatever, and they thought they'd get away with it. But somehow, by the end of the day, they found out who had the walkie-talkie, and they were basically sitting out in their car in the parking lot, you know, broadcasting all day. And uh, the two guys who were involved got caught, and they weren't allowed to actually walk across the stage. You know, that was their, their deal. And so, you know, uh, yeah, that's kids, not- kids will be kids, but there are consequences. There yeah. are consequences. You got to be careful, kids. Yeah, he's absolutely <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that, I mean, it, you know, I don't know that these kids deserve jail time. I think yeah. they should certainly have fines. I think they should probably have probation, but I, I wouldn't send these kids to jail. Would you let them walk at graduation? Oh, of course not. Yeah. No. Yeah. So no, I mean, gonna... What they did was very serious. I don't know that they should be thrown in with hardened criminals. Yeah. I'd say if they paid for the valve stems and put them back, let them walk. But, you know, <laughs> I, you know I'm so easy but anyway yeah i mean yeah you know uh, require that they pay them pay the money back pay that their that their parents it's obviously it's going to be their parents uh pay that money back but uh and you know give them some probation but i i I wouldn't give them jail time these are these are kids yeah yeah and and again it seems pretty apparent to me and i you know just from reading the little story here i really doubt they went into this with what i would call criminal intent yeah they thought they were being silly they thought they were going to do some epic prank you know that would that would be funny 
and obviously they cross that line, and kids don't always have that judgment. Well, there's been a study, you know, that, that since we're talking about pranks and that sort of thing, there was a study that, you know, the carrot and the stick argument, yes. that the stick actually trumps the carrot, um, you know, and y- I know that you use the carrot and the stick in your classroom mo- yes, more I often do. the carrot, though. Um, it says, do, do people learn better by re- being rewarded for the right behavior or punishing for doing wrong? A new study offers a harsh answer. The stick beats the carrot. Researchers at Washington University Washington University of St. Louis had 88 students performed a challenging task. Some listened to a randomized bunch of clicks in each year that they had they had to say which side heard more, etc. And the one the kids who got the stick, who got a, a response for doing it incorrectly, um, uh, were more likely to do the right thing. Yeah. The thing about that is that you can only do that for so long before people just rebel. Exactly, and that's and that's what I've learned as a teacher. So you can use the punitive stuff. You can you know beat the kids up for the bad stuff. But you can't do that all the time because they'll turn on you. Yes. So you've got to have some positive stuff in there, too. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> positive well, positive words to end by or end on. Mm-hmm. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. We have Mark Westwood in the booth. We are on the brink, the morning show here on KCAA AM 1050. Have a productive Tuesday, everybody. You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Mergers, stocks fall. I'm Dirk Van. Death toll rising in the latest major earthquake to strike Nepal. 39 killed, over 1,000 injured. In today's magnitude 7.3 quake, correspondent Ivan Watson. The Indian Air Force already has helicopters in the air rescuing dozens of wounded people. The Nepalese military is already hard at work trying to collect wounded people from out in the countryside. Last month's quake in Nepal killed more than 8,000. Another major media merger in the works. Telecom giant Verizon says it's buying media giant AOL for $4.4 billion. Correspondent Joe Ramsey. Verizon says the acquisition is part of their new focus on digital and video platforms as well as its own connected device network. AOL owns brands like the Huffington Post, TechCrunch, and Gadget, and AOL.com. Wall Street sharply lower in early trading, and fidgeting and stretching, hardly the classic way to lose weight. But a Mayo Clinic study finds these non-exercise activities will help you burn fat. I'm Dirk Van. The results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's scent and alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's non-addictive and provides 24-hour relief of the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Uses directed. Guys, when you buy your clothes at DXL, you look good. But you feel like a rock star. So if you want to look and feel like a... You'll find all the brands you love, waist size 38 and up, all in one awesome store. DXL, you're looking good. Right now, select dress shirts are just $49.50 each when you buy two or more. Good morning, 702. Mark Westwood with you on the radio. Uh, Take a look at uh, Inland Empire weather and traffic. Well, nice out this morning. A few clouds here and there, but otherwise going to be sunny today. High 72 to 77. Mostly clear this evening. Partly cloudy, patchy fog in the canyons and passes. Colder a little bit. Lows 42 to 50. Rain is on its way back in, folks. Uh, We're going to have that rain approaching about Thursday. Showers likely on Friday and a slight chance of thunderstorms, they're saying, on Friday with highs only in the mid-60s. Currently, 72 degrees at KCAA as we take a look at traffic in Corona. Stop and go traffic 91 between McKinley Street and Green River Road. In Marino Valley, stop and go traffic I-215 northbound between Cactus Avenue and El Cerrito. And out in Riverside, we do have an accident blocking the shoulder on I-215 northbound after Central Avenue. 215 north past Central Avenue. A two vehicle crash is now along the uh, roadside. From the middle lanes, uh, traffic is slow from Cactus. That's a look at your weather and traffic from the only station that leaves no listener behind, KCAA, 1050 AM. E-Digits, lock them in for more information, recreation, and guaranteed fun. KCAA, 1050 AM. 
Attention homeowners, you've seen your electricity bill go higher and higher, and experts predict that average prices will continue increasing. Aren't you tired of throwing away money every month? You could save thousands of dollars a year while increasing your home's value by switching to solar energy with Best Energy Advisor, the leader in affordable solar energy since 1987. Everyone's heard about solar energy. It works day or night. It doesn't matter if it's sunny or cloudy out. And now it's more affordable than ever. One free call to our experts and you'll find out how to get a solar system installed in your home. Call 800-406-4962 and ask about the zero down one year no payment option. Best Energy Advisor makes it easy for homeowners to go solar and handles all the paperwork to take advantage of the government's tax credits, grants and rebates, saving you even more money. But these won't last forever, so call now. 800-406-4962. If your electricity bill is over $100 per month, go solar and save money. Call 800-406-4962. 800-406-4962. Hi, everybody. Ray Lucia here. You know, we just saw the biggest jump in mortgage rates in more than 25 years. So now it's more important than ever to lock in your loan with a professional who has a thorough understanding of this wild mortgage market. That pro, Steve Allador, the loan financial planner from Rancho Financial. Steve is one of the top 1% of mortgage originators in the entire country. And for years, Steve has worked with me, my family members and friends, and in most cases, will close your loan in 30 days or less. Time is critical if you're ready to buy or refi. No one knows where rates will go next. Learn the advantages of working with a direct lender who can fast track your loan. Steve Allador can calculate which program is best for you and educate you about all of your options. Call the loan financial planner, Steve Allador, at 888-563-1070. That's 888-563-1070. Or watch Steve's free home loan webinar at loanfinancialplanner.com. That's loanfinancialplanner.com. Hey, Bob, how's business? Is the new website helping? Not good. I, I can't figure out how to get the website finished. How did you do it? Easy. I called web.com. They built my website for free. Then they promoted it on all the search engines. Like Google, Yahoo, and Bing? Exactly. And web.com has helped grow my business so much, I had to bring on new staff. Hey, if web.com did it for you, they're perfect for me. Call now, 1-800-535-8815. That's 1-800-535-8815. Again, 1-800-535-8815. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. He's been a professional money manager for the last 18 years. He is a regular contributor to the Fox Business Channel and Bloomberg Radio. In addition to this, he is a regular contributor to TheStreet.com and MarketWatch.com. Now he's live here on the Wall Street Business Network. Here is Bill Gunderson. And welcome to the uh, Tuesday, May the 12th, live edition of the Best Stocks Now Radio Hour with professional money manager Bill Gunderson. Well, one of those down days on the market, one of those red days on the market that come along from time to time. Over the last six uh, plus years, we've had a bull market that's carried this thing up 311%. We've had many days like this. But obviously, we have to stop and examine every one of the times that days like this come along and try to fix.